Coming up on Cardinals Insider, I sit down with Dylan Carlson. A lot of excitement out here and I'm just ready to go. Plus, hear how Jackie Robinson inspired a young Lou Brock. The first time I heard about the Hall of Fame, Jackie Robinson had just broke the color barrier. And later, and a young, it's a high fly ball. It's at the wall, gone! The call up day was even more crazy when I ended up getting to the game late in like the fifth inning. It's a memory that lasts a lifetime. That and more ahead on Cardinals Insider. Welcome to Cardinals Insider, I'm Ozzie Smith. Dylan Carlson made his long-awaited debut on August 15th. He started both ends of a doubleheader collecting his first Major League hit with a double in Game 2. This spring, Carlson joined me for a sit-down in Jupiter to talk about his journey through the system. Carlson hits it out to right, base hit! His first Major League hit. Carlson around first base, Miller to third, Dylan in safely at second base, Dylan Carlson with his first major league hit, it's a double. Explain to me, how do you see yourself as a ball player? Yeah, uh, for me, you know, I'm just someone that's here to help the team. I'm very versatile. I play all three outfield positions. I hit from both sides of the plate. So for me, it's just, you know, being able to be available and being able to contribute any way I can. So you grew up in, in uh, Northern California? Yep, uh, Sacramento, California. That's where I'm from, born and raised. Uh, so it's pretty cool. I grew up around the field. My dad was my high school coach, and, uh, you know, I just always grew up around the field, and baseball's just been all I've known. So when did you know that you had a chance to play professional? Uh, you know, it really didn't start coming together until probably my senior year of high school. You know, I kind of got just better gradually throughout the years without even realizing it, just playing and playing and all of a sudden, you know, you look up and there's a bunch of scouts at your games and you're like, wow, you know, this is really a reality, something that I could do. And obviously it was something I always dreamed about doing and just for the way it unfolded to be drafted by the Cardinals, you know, of all teams is real honor and real exciting. When you were growing up, uh, what, did you ever think about playing for the Cardinals? Uh, no, no, honestly, and that's the <laughs> coolest part to me, you know, just, I, fo I always followed the Cardinals, like, as far as, like, they were always in the playoffs. I was always such a big fan of baseball, so I knew the Cardinals. I always saw them winning and winning, and then to be picked and drafted by them was, you know, a real honor. Has the uh, the publicity and, and stuff that you've gotten, has that become a, a distraction? For me, I just really try to keep my focus on the field, involving, you know, just involving the game, what I can do that night to get better. I really try to keep it between the lines. Have any... Um, is anybody on the team uh, have you gravitated toward you or anybody that you spend spend a lot of time with? Yeah, um, Paul Goldschmidt. Luckily last year I was also in Major League Camp, so I got to be around all these guys and I got real familiar with a lot of guys. Um, you know, Yadier Molina, Adam Wainwright, just, I mean, the list goes on and on. There's so many great guys in that clubhouse. It's such an honor to be here and, you know, for them to reach out and be so willing to give advice and, you know, share past experiences, it's a real honor. And that's up the middle, base hit for Carlson. What do you expect from this year? Uh, for me, you know, I'd just, you know, like to get out there, play, give it my all, and, you know, whatever happens, happens. Great job by Dylan Carlson right here. You can just see the little adjustments that Dylan makes, and this is why he is considered the best prospect in our organization. How's Mike Schilt then? Oh, he's been incredible. He, uh, you know, he's real clear, lets you know what he expects from you, and, you know, it's just uh, been really awesome to be able to kind of, you know, be under him and play underneath him. Well, good. Well, we're expecting wonderful things for you. Thanks for doing Thank this, and uh, good luck this year. Thank you. Straight ahead on Cardinals Insider. Jim Crow was king in the South. Blacks had very little opportunity to be in touch with their own experience. Learn how Jackie Robinson inspired a young Lou Brock. And also coming up, I got a call from a Memphis number. I was excited, obviously. I got right off the phone, called my parents, called my mom and dad. Memories of getting the call. When Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in 1947, it opened up new possibilities for generations of black players. That included seven-year-old Lou Brock. Lou talked about the hope Robinson provided during his Hall of Fame induction speech.
first time I heard about the Hall of Fame, Jackie Robinson had just broke the color barrier, and I was a nine-year-old boy growing up in a southern town. Black players began to enter the big leagues. There was those who condemned that act by announcing to the world that baseball is turning into a black nightmare. Jim Crow was king in the South. Blacks had very little opportunity to be in touch with their own experience. One summer night while searching the dial of our old field call radio, I came across a baseball game between the Brooklyn Dodgers and the St. Louis Cardinals. But I thought I had tuned into another world, a world of genuine expression of feelings, and that hurt and loneliness was not the natural price for being alive. Baseball fed my fantasy about what life offered. I felt free and alive. My spirit was sore, and I believed that one day my life would be different, and I too would be right out there on that field of play. My high school coach, he made a statement that I never forgot. And he said, no one can make you feel inferior without first getting your permission. Straight ahead, reliving a classic season in Cardinals history. We've seen lots of Major League debuts this season. There's nothing like the first time appearing in a big league game. The memories last forever, as these Cardinals can attest. And to Young, it's a high fly ball. Out to deep left field. It's at the wall. Gone! Major League debut! Well, I was at home and I didn't have Stubby's uh, number saved, so I get this call from Memphis number I didn't know. And he called me back and I finally answered. He said, hey, can you come back to the stadium? And I walked back and because I was so close, um, I was staying so close. And he's like, hey, you're getting called up. And you know, I was just uh, ecstatic and called all my family. and. You know, the rest of the, the call up day was even more crazy when the uh, connection flight that I was supposed to take didn't even arrive in Memphis. So I ended up getting to the game late in like the fifth inning and, uh, you know, just nonchalantly putting my uniform on. You should ask Wayno about that and, uh, you know, strolling out into the dugout and telling Matheny I was there and, you know, the rest is history. I kind of got tipped a little bit that I might have been going up to the big leagues. I had a, a tease when I was with the Braves in AA, hey, we might call you up this year. And it didn't happen, so I, I, I knew not to take that too far because I got my hopes way up when I was over there and it didn't happen, so I was kind of disappointed. But when I was with the Cardinals, um, he calls me into the office. and or, So everyone else got called into the office after the game that was going up, like three or four guys. And, hey, you know, congratulations, blah, blah, blah. And, and I didn't get called in, and I was like, no way this is happening again, right? Like, I, I feel like this is, this is my last shot. So I went into the gym and I kind of grabbed a couple of 10 pound weights and I was like acting like I was working out, you know, just trying to stick around so he could call me in. And then after about 10 minutes, he finally calls me in after everybody else has already left. And he goes, all right, I, I feel like it's been long enough. Yeah, you're going up. So when you get up there and enjoy it and, and that was it. But um, I don't have any great stories about it other than that he, he kind of played the tease on me, you know, acting like I wasn't going to get called up. Well, I was getting ready to head over to the field for a game in Memphis um, and I got a call from a a Memphis number, which was our manager, Ben Johnson. I answered it, because I was like, ah, that's weird, why is he calling me? Uh, once BJ broke the news, um, I was excited, obviously. I got right off the phone, called my parents, called my mom and dad, um, but they needed me that night in St. Louis, so I had to pack up quick and I had to hit the road to get there. I, I walked in right when the national anthem was going on, so it was actually pretty good timing. I was hitting pretty good down AAA. We were in Omaha, Nebraska playing the, the Royals AAA down there um, and you know Stubby gave me a call at like 11.30 I was about to go to bed and he said you're gonna get on a flight tomorrow it's like it was like 5.30 6 a.m. flight tomorrow to go to Chicago going to play at Wrigley um, you know obviously I've seen Wrigley on TV you know it's just very historic in, in itself um, and Chicago as a city is great so I was ecstatic. No honestly I, I I got I got a knock on my door at like 8:30 in the morning, right before a game, and uh, it was the head coach. He's like, "Hey, can I come in?" I was like, "Absolutely, come on." And he comes in. He's like, "Hey, man, pack your stuff. You're going up." And 
Um, at the time, I was like, oh, okay, thank you very much. And as he walked out, I closed the door and I just literally like sank to the floor in tears. You know, it's just one of those things as a kid, you grow up dreaming of that opportunity. You know, you, you don't expect it to happen, obviously, you know, but to get that final call and be able to have the privilege to call my parents is pretty cool. This has been a very different type of baseball season for everyone in Cardinals Nation. But one Southern Illinois fan found a creative way to enjoy Cardinal baseball even before games began. Brick McMillan has that story. One ball, two strikes, and a strikeout for Gallegos. March 12th created a lot of questions. And basically that ends spring training, at least games, in 2020. So we sit and wait. We wait, we wait. With the status of the 2020 season pending, one Southern Illinois fan came up with a way to ensure that opening day arrived right on schedule. John Davis decided he was going to relive the 1946 season day by day, and he invited anyone who wished to join him. It occurred to me that the thing to do would be to find a Cardinal baseball season and to follow it through um, through the magic of the internet. I was really interested in 1946 because in 45, my dad came back from the war, was there for two years, and he came back to a toddler that didn't know him. It wasn't until the summer uh, of 46, when we listened to baseball games together, it was that summer that I fell in love with not only my dad, but also with baseball. The thing I would want to express is the gratitude that I think everybody on this chain has for John and the amount of time and the diligence for doing this on a, on an everyday basis. Ron Barger is one of 30 people now receiving Davis's daily recap of what the Cardinals did nearly 75 years ago. Well, you have to look at the time. I mean, we were in the middle of COVID-19. It was just like this joyful thing that I came to look forward to. Updates include links to that day's box score and tidbits on other cards happenings, which Davis has labeled extra innings. The group trades emails discussing that day's game and other baseball history topics too. They've even discovered that some of them have a history that goes way, way back. I was a public school teacher in Columbia, Missouri. I still live in Columbia. One of the fellows that was also on this group, maybe added later on, was Andy Rawlings. Well, I had him in class. He realizes this is the Terry Farmer's teacher, and he goes, Mr. Farmer, is that you? Wong with a fly ball, and this will do it. A drive into deep right field. Good night. Even though the current season has begun, the group plans to finish out their journey through 46. It's given them a new group of friends and acquaintances spread all over the country, united by a love of Cardinals baseball, both past and present. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Brett McMillan. And after the break, we know obviously that fans can't be in stands, so we came up with Ballpark to Go, which is enough authentic ballpark food to feed a family of six. How you can get ballpark eats at home. Stay with us. Do you ever find yourself craving a ballpark hot dog? Well, there's good news. Cardinals Nation is giving you the chance to have your favorite Bush Stadium eats right at home. Goldschmidt with a drive. Out to deep left. It's at the wall. Goodbye. A prodigious blast. We all know there's a lot of Cardinals baseball happening right now. And with the all new Ballpark To Go, you can enjoy all your favorite ballpark snacks from Bush Stadium. We know obviously that fans can't be in stands. We invite fans here to Cardinals Nation to be the closest that you can get to the stadium. But we also know that people want to be at home and they want to enjoy their Cardinals game at home. So we came up with Ballpark To Go, which is um, enough authentic ballpark food to feed a family of six, whether it's at your house watching the game, a couple of friends getting together, or even like a, a, a company luncheon. Ballpark To Go offers two different fan favorites. You can choose from the classic Ballpark Pack, or if you're in the mood for chicken wings, try the Foul Pole Pack. So we had to go with you know the, the standard Ballpark Fair Pack, and that is uh, six hot dogs, six bratwurst, and a mound of nachos. 
And these are the same hot dogs you'd get in the stadium, the same bratwurst you get in the stadium. The nachos are built the same way it would be in the stadium with the same chips, the same cheese. So it, it, it really is your ballpark experience that you can get here from Cardinals Nation Restaurant and take home. There are four options of wings to choose from. So while you're ordering online at cardinalsnation.com, you have the choice of any of the four. You pick three of the four, and it'll come with two pounds of each of the selection that you pick. Whether you're dining in or ordering to go, Cardinals Nation offers contactless order. There's two ways you can pick up. So if it's a non-game day, you can just pull right in front of Cardinals Nation Restaurant on Clark Street and then give us a call and we'll bring everything right out to you. If it is a game day, we have uh, parking out in the Ballpark Village lot. So whether you're cheering on the cards during a doubleheader or just missing ballpark food, Ballpark to Go should be your go-to. To place an order, go to cardinalsnation.com. And for Cardinals Insider, I'm Emily Stevens. This year's Cardinal Hall of Fame induction has been postponed until 2021. Tom Hur, John Tudor, and Bill White will be inducted next season along with the class of 2021. Since there's no ceremony this year, we thought we'd relive last year's festivities as we dig into the Insider archives. Now it is time to meet our 2019 Cardinals Hall of Fame inductees. He helped the club to two National League pennants, a world championship, and is the Cardinals all-time saves leader. Please stand, please welcome Jason Isringhausen. I stand here in front of you guys like many have come before me. I am humbled, thankful, and in awe of this honor. <laughs> There's nothing like that feeling when the bullpen door opens and 40,000 people are on their feet cheering, and maybe sometimes booing. It happens. It comes with the job. <laughs> it was amazing then, and you guys still never disappoint today. Like you, I'm a fan of this great organization, I love the Cardinals. The birds on the bat mean more than just baseball. Being here among all of you, it's home. He combined offense and defense at third base like few have done before him. Jaw-dropping plays with regularity. And who could forget what we just saw there, that home run off of Roger Clemens? That's Scott Rowland. Looks pretty good. You know, Izzy and I, we get to stand up here and we get to share red jackets with some of our teammates that are on here, which is, which is amazing. Um, but I go back and I, I realize how lucky I am. You invite us into your living rooms, into your homes, and you let your children and your families wear our names on your family's back. We do not take that for granted one second. So thank you, St. Louis Cardinal fans. And gentlemen, I am humbled and honored to join with my friend Jason Isringhausen, you gentlemen, as a St. Louis Cardinal Hall of Famer. Thank you. One more time, though, for Scott Rowland, Jason Isringhausen, the Cardinals Hall of Fame of 2019. Coming up, I answer one of your questions during Ask Ozzy. It's time for this week's Ask Ozzy. Yolanda in St. Louis asks, how did it feel being inducted into the Cardinals Hall of Fame? Well, for me, it was the inaugural uh, induction ceremony, so it was very, very special. And to be inducted with all of the great Cardinals, like Bob Gibson, Lou Brock, Red Shane Deans, Stan Musial, doesn't get any better than that. It's always great getting together with the guys. Being considered one of the Red Jackets is very, very special. Knowing the Cardinal history, I'm very honored to be a part of that group. If you want to submit a question, head on over to cardinals.com insider and click on the Ask Ozzy tab, and we'll be right back. Bubblegum is the only candy in the dugout, but it's not the only sweet treat the Cardinals enjoy. 
What are their favorites? We asked during this week's Ask a Cardinal. Ooh, favorite candy. See, I'm a sweets guy, I love candy, so it's hard for me to pick. Uh, I would say Skittles. I kind of go back and forth. I'll, I'll eat Kit Kat, Twix, um, Snickers, anything with chocolate, chocolate with a little something else mixed in. See, I eat a lot of candy. That's a tough. Uh, favorite like pure candy that's not like chocolate would be Sour Patch Watermelon, but then I eat a lot of like peanut, peanut M&Ms. I eat a lot of candy, it's bad. Probably gummy bears or gummy worms or, I'm not big on sweets, but if I have to, it's that and popcorn together. Love that. Sour Patch Watermelons. Although high chews are making their way up the list, I strongly recommend uh, for people who have not tried a high chew, I think those are very good. But Sour Patch Watermelons are, are the winner right now. Favorite candy. Uh, Sour Patch Kids. Sour Patch Kids. I mean, the, if they have the blue kind only, they make packs of just the blue kind, then I get those. But if not, anything, anything goes. You guys have Smarties? You know what Smarties are? Yeah, there's gotta, gotta be those. I've loved, loved those ever since I was a kid. Uh, that or a Kit Kat. You know, just buy me the, the four pack bundle of, of candy. I'll, I'll munch on those. Uh, I like Reese's cups. Or Reese's eggs, excuse me. Reese's eggs. Yes, they're way better. Sour Patch Watermelon. White chocolate Kit Kat. Um, I also like the flavored, which are rare, the flavored Tootsie Rolls. So like the ones in like the blue, like the vanilla one, and then obviously all, all of the colors, so kind of off the off the path of normal candy. <laughs> That's it for this episode. You can always catch us online at cardinals.com slash insider and on YouTube. And we'll see you next week.